In this presentation, we will provide an overview of the importance of documentation as it relates to data management and data publishing. You will learn about data mapping, data relationships, and metadata. In the previous Foundations presentations, we looked at the individual elements that make up both your data and the containers that hold it. Now, we'll look at ways to document those data and what you want to do with it. According to the director Steven Spielberg, people have forgotten how to tell a story. Stories don't have a middle or an end anymore. They usually have a beginning that never stops beginning. Documentation is the story of your project or dataset. There should always be a concrete beginning, middle and end. In essence, you should be able to answer certain questions at specific points. At the beginning, what did your project aim to do? What was the purpose of creating the dataset? In the middle, what did we actually do? What did we achieve? At the end, what didn't we achieve? Why? What should happen next? In order to document your data and render them as fit for use as possible for yourself and future users, you need to follow these three essential steps. Mapping your data to existing formats and standards if necessary. Planning your data moves and create useful metadata describing your data. We will begin by looking at ways to describe your data then, we will show you how to map your data from one data structure to another, and finally, talk about how to record metadata about your data. First is mapping data. This is the process that you will use to describe how the attributes in your datasets can be transformed into attributes in a different one. Mapping data is the process of identifying the start fields within that dataset A, and it's or their corresponding fields in dataset B. In this example, dataset A has 10 columns. There are some integer fields represented by the purple squares, some Boolean fields represented by the red triangles, some date fields represented by blue pentagons, some text fields, green eight-pointed stars, and some complex fields. Dataset B has a different set of fields, 15 in total. What we need to do is identify which fields in dataset A match which fields in dataset B. We do that by describing the relationships. For example, dataset A has an ID field and so does dataset B. We can draw a line directly between the two. This is called a one-to-one -one match. The question here is, can you see any other one-to-one -one matches? The answer is state, exp, and pink elephant. Another type of relationship is a one-to-many. In these cases, there is a single field in dataset A that maps to two or more fields in dataset B. Date is an example. You may also find cases where more than one field in dataset A contains data from more than one field in dataset B. Notes fields are often guilty of this. In fact, there are six relationships. Some fields will map one to one, meaning that the original colon in dataset A exactly matches another one in dataset B. Some fields will map many to one, meaning that some columns in dataset A can be merged or concatenated to match a single one in dataset B. Some fields will map one to many, meaning that one column in dataset A will have to be split into two or more fields in order to match the fields in dataset B. Some fields might not exist yet. The relationship is zero to one, meaning that some information are not present in dataset A and need to be added in a new column to match an existing field in dataset B. Some fields might not have a place to go, the relationship is 1 to 0, meaning that some information present in dataset A does not match any existing field on dataset B. Some fields will map many to many, meaning that information in dataset A is scattered in different fields which do not exactly match existing ones in dataset B. 
Each of the relationship types has its own nuances as to how you are going to have to handle them. In this presentation, one-to-one, -one, beware your field types. If they are not the same, you will need to do some manipulation. Many-to-one, these fields will need to be joined together to go into the field. One-to-many, these fields will need to be split apart and put into different fields. Zero to one, work out how or if you can even fill these in. Is the data mixed into a notes field? If so, how do you get it out? One to zero, either throw away the data or add a field. You might not even have a home in the other dataset. Do or can you create a new field? Many to many, or for the love of a higher being, this usually means that your incoming data is very messy and will take time to clean before you can map it. This is an example of what a mapping document looks like. Notice that not only do we document the relationship, we also articulate to the best of our knowledge what should be done to the data. We've talked a lot about documenting the structure that holds your data, but you must also document the information that gives context. This is called metadata and is data about your data. As we mentioned in the section on data quality, your metadata must be rich enough to allow data reuse by a third party without them having to refer to the data source. We will discuss this in more detail in later sessions, but as a quick guide, good documentation should include a title, which should be descriptive, memorable, and if possible, unique. Dates are good to include in the dataset name, for example, to allow you to track versions. A narrative should describe the rationale for the creation of the dataset. It should include at least general information about spatial, temporal, and taxonomic coverage and give the potential user a broad picture of uses that may be appropriate for the data without further transformation. Source information. If you did not collect or measure the data yourself, where or who did you get it from? Lineage. Does the dataset have a history? Have any of the fields been transformed in any way from the original? Statement of accuracy. Using the concepts of accuracy, precision, errors, and uncertainty that we discussed previously, are there any issues with the datasets that should be known to your user? Dates and life expectancy. When will the dataset be available? How long is it valid for? When, if ever, will it be updated? Field definitions. Describing the format of fields and what kind of data each contains. Was any cleaning or transformation done to the original data? This is important for you to know if you are mapping it to a standard such as Darwin Core. Collection methodology. How was the data collected? Were there protocols used which will affect its fitness for use? Statement of completeness. What is missing from the data and why? Conditions of use and constraints. Where and how can you use the data? For most portals and JBIF in particular, Data must use very open licensing, so understanding the requirements of data owners and their institutions is very important. Custodianship and contact information. This should be the institution responsible for the data set as presented to you, as well as, if possible, the individual who created the data set. There should also be a technical contact who is responsible for the publication of the data set. If you have questions on this presentation, please use the provided forum in the e-learning platform. This video is part of a series of presentations used in the JBIF Biodiversity Data Mobilization course. The Biodiversity Data Mobilization curriculum was originally developed as part of the Biodiversity Information Development Program funded by the European Union. This presentation was originally created by Sharon Grant and has been narrated by Sophie Pamerlon.